In 2008, the Blender Foundation ran an experiment of open source game development straight after Blender's open source movie, Big Buck Bunny. The game was developed entirely in Blender, released for free, and built by a team of artists and programmers working in cooperation with the foundation. The game was called Yo Frankie, and if you've never heard of it, that's understandable. It didn't land on Steam, and it didn't even run in Unity or Unreal, because it was an opportunity to test Blender's game engine, or the BGE. The game marked a milestone, because Blender developers had taken a leap. The game was full of problems, rough on the edges, but it worked, so how did they do it? After a couple of open movie projects, the Blender Institute announced Project Apricot, their third open project, this time testing game pipelines. The idea, build a playable platformer using the same tools that powered their animated films. So in February of 2008, a core cool group of six artists and developers moved to Amsterdam to begin the journey. They sketched level design, walking, and gameplay prototypes, all using Blender as the main production tool. The initial concept revolved around expanding the world of Big Buck Bunny, turning its antagonist into a playable character in a 3D platformer. As development progressed through spring and summer, the scope included playful levels inspired by the film's settings. Although the game was functionally complete by late July, some technical delays pushed the DVD release until November 14th, so pre-orders helped fund development. Alongside sponsorships, from the Dutch Game Days Foundation and group Ecosnet. A few weeks later, the game was uploaded as a free download, along with its source files, artwork, and documentation. You see, the open philosophy extended beyond art production. Community involvement played a role from day one. Volunteers submitted levels blueprints, helped debug, and even offered music. In the end, Project Apricot wasn't just a game became a living example of open cooperation in software and art. At the start when the project began, the plan involved a separate real-time engine, Crystal Space. So Blender was gonna function as the asset creation hub, while Crystal Space would run the game's logic and rendering. That architecture allowed a typical pipeline, which involved modeling in Blender, export into the engine, test, and iterate. Initially, Crystal Space was chosen to create what the team hoped would be a more ambitious game platform. It offered advanced rendering features, and the developers worked closely with the community. However, Crystal Space builds required full compilation and took longer to iterate. But soon, things changed. Blender's internal engine, known as the Blender Game Engine, or the BGE, began adding features, real-time GLSL shading, improved logic bricks, and tight integration with Blender's animation and asset management tools. These features made development much faster, so prototypes could be iterated in seconds, not minutes. So the team shipped two parallel versions, a Crystal Space build called Furry Funny Frankie, and a BGE version nicknamed a Furry Vendetta. Both shared the same models, textures, and animations, but each version had its own scripting, physics setup, and level timing. This dual engine approach made the DVD release unique, while Crystal Space handled complex gameplay logic. The BGE speed allowed for fast edits, and level changes could be tested with a single key press. And over time, more features were pushed into the BGE pipeline. And improvements made during Project Apricot directly informed Blender's 249's game tools. Bullet time physics, real time shader support, and the logic editor all matured through the needs of the project. In the end, the BGE version captured more attention, testing was smooth, and assets were editable on the fly. So this rapid cycle encouraged more experimentation and helped make the project even better. At its core, Yo Frankie played like a light 3D platformer. You can control Frankie through colorful outdoor environments, like grassy woods, rocky cliffs, or lava-speckled caves. The mix of running, climbing ledges, and picking up objects to throw gave it a playful sandbox vibe rather than the structured, score-driven platformer. 
The game emphasized mischief, so players could lift sheep, knock over rats, and lob nuts at targets. Classic weight-based puzzles existed side by side with a slapstick combat. No permanent harm, just ragdoll antics. Collectibles included nuts spread across levels, which coordinated puzzles and increased score, while hidden seeds unlocked bonus content. Gameplay remained approachable. Animations were smooth, gravity felt believable, and Claire's Fitch's whimsical soundtrack matched the cartoon tone. Each level was short, but they felt polished and fun. Ufraki served as more than just an art project. It shaped the Blender's engine. Feedback from developers contributed to major improvements in Blender 249, released mid-2009. This included enhancements in the Logic Brick system, title support for bullet physics, and the introduction of video texture playback, and upgraded GLSL shading support, all tested live during Apricot. Python script informed another backbone. Both versions utilized Python for character control, camera behavior, input handling, and puzzle logic, because developers could tweak scripts without recompiling and iteration speed increased. Artists could, for instance, change animation transitions in Blender and hit P to test immediately, which is highly effective for prototyping. Beyond runtime features, Blender's asset pipeline, its node editor, UV workflow, and rigging interface received real-world testing. When issues arose during game development, contributors directly submitted patches. This agile interplay between pipeline and gameplay paid dividends in the long term, with many features persisting beyond the lifespan of the BGE. At launch, the game received praise, especially within open source circles, praising its playful interactions and level design. Players noticed some minor bugs and simplicity compared to some commercial titles, but also appreciated the whimsical graphics, adventurous tone, and the sheer novelty for a free game produced entirely with open source tools. This demonstration of Blender's real-time engine inspired others, and it became a reference point for aspiring game developers interested in Blender and other free software. Yo Frankie appeared on many open source game lists and was cited as one of the first polished Blender made games. It also helped validate the open production model, showing that small teams supported by a global community and using only free software could ship a real 3D game. The project encouraged further development in Blender's real time tools before the BGE was ultimately phased out in 2019. Everything about your Frankie remains accessible. Downloads for both the game engine and the Crystal Space versions are still available, packaged with Blender's 249's runtime. All the models, sounds, scripts, and source code are published under open licenses. GNU GPF for code and Creative Commons Attributes 3.0 for the assets. The installation is still simple. A zip package offers a Blender version with its runtime bundled. Pressing P starts the game. For Crystal Space, the installation is a bit more technical, but the guides still exist. Archived copies of the DVD contain extras, like concept art, animation, dev commentary, and test files. There is even a snap version for Linux for one-click installs. The Blender SVN repository still hosts the full project for anyone curious about the build pipeline, even if the BGE is no longer maintained. Yo Frankie still runs today quirky, dated but playable. It stands as a Relic Blender's experimental era, and as an example of what is possible when a team trusts open tools and do more than anyone expected. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.